right, so before we commence with the eBay unboxing, I have a product recommendation. We just did an unboxing of a beautiful bracelet I got off of eBay, and uh, these boxes are really great. So if you have jewelry that you want to display, you can get one of these boxes. There'll be a link for it in the description below. Watch this. Look at this. It opens up. It has lights inside of it. And so your jewelry or whatever you want to put inside of it, they have uh, ring boxes. They have earring boxes. They have bracelet boxes, necklace boxes that light up like this. I'm going to put a link in the description below for the bracelet box. And there you go. And then we have now my bracelet, my vintage 1940s bracelet in a display that lights up. Really cool. All right, let's go on to the unboxing. And all right, so we're going to put that on the side. And here we go. He, we have our box. We're going to unbox this. I don't know what it is. I think I have um, an idea what it is, but I order so many things that I can't tell you right now. It'll probably be in the thumbnail. And we're going to do this in fast motion because I don't think any of you want to sit through this. So I saw this in the middle of the night on eBay when usually I go lurking about because I don't sleep. So if it's 12 midnight here in New York, it's 9 o'clock in California. So there's a lot of action sometimes where things are listed and uh, nobody else sees them because they're sleeping. And so, wow, this is actually really pretty. Let's go take a look at this. Yes, I have holes in my gloves. It doesn't really matter. This is my antique handling gloves. And uh, I'm trying to be a professional like Dr. Lori. And <laughs> here we go. So we got this. Uh, wow, this is actually something else. So this is opaline, um, opaline or opaline glass. And, well, it's really not. But they call it opal wear glass. As you can see, it's very opal-like. And... Uh, you notice there's an arrow. The seller actually put the arrow pointing. And uh, right beneath that is a mark. And I don't know if we can see this. Can we? Let's let's try to zoom in here. So maybe you can read what it says. But it says Wave Crest. Wave Crest. And I've done a lot, a lot of videos on Wave Crest. And Wave Crest was actually a company that made opalware novelties. Or these little like almost porcelain type of novelties and it didn't just come in boxes they made letter letter boxes or stationary boxes they made um, all sorts of things out of this opal ware and uh, I'm trying to think what else they made plates and actual beautiful plaques and lamps even lamps and this actually got a, a fair rating from the seller so the seller said yeah this box is wave crest now I don't think the seller looked up wave crest like looked it up as as they should have because there's no way they would have sold this for $15 buy it now if they really realized what this is. Now, what I love about it is is that the seller said it was in fair condition, so that scared everybody away. And uh I could see that it's actually not in fair condition. It's in actually quite good condition. And look at this beautiful bluish color. You see that? That's that's really really nice about this and the hand painting. So this is telling me this is from the 1890s. Now Wavecrest was a company that uh, I believe we're gonna have to Google it because I, I have like a very short attention memory. What do you call it? A, a short term memory. And I believe it was in Connecticut. We'll do the whole uh, history thing in a moment. But uh, these little boxes are what people go after. They uh, actually made the most beautiful little boxes. Most of the stuff was hand painted until the company started to actually, uh, yeah, they got cheaper because they didn't feel like uh, paying artists to hand paint the stuff. And so they started stenciling the little decals on the top and painting over them. But this is an earlier one. This is actually, what's cool about this one is the, uh, the design. So if you look here on the side, we had this really fancy, fancy design over here. If you turn it on this side, it actually goes around. We have this gorgeous scroll work. And yes, the um, painting is sort of worn. That's from age. Um, you know, after a while, the uh, coloring starts to uh, come off of it. But this, I wouldn't say this was in fair condition. I'd say this is an actually immaculate condition. And so let's open it up. A lot of them would have this metal 
hardware. Now, Wavecrest actually started in the 1880s making these pieces. There was a, a, a guy's name that we'll get to, the owner of this company. And he started in 1880, but his stuff didn't really take off to the 1890s. And he basically made giftware. So you would buy these to give to people as gifts. And this was a really nice giftware. And let's open it up. And what is really amazing about this box, let's uh, zoom out, is it has its original silk interior. And when it had the silk interior, generally this was known, this was not a powder box. Because most of his little boxes like these are powder boxes. This would have been a jewel box, which is uh, quite lovely. 90% of the time, the original silk inside them has melted and disintegrated. And people just ripped them out. They ripped them out and you just see the bare opal glass or opal wear uh, material without anything. And this is actually, I can't believe the seller thought this was in fair condition because it was a great, great purchase for me for only uh, 15 doll hairs. All right, so let's find out more about Wavecrest. And again, nine times out of 10 also, you will not see the original mark on the bottom. I'm going to take these labels off. Upon further investigation, a lot of these wave crest pieces, the, the mark disappears. As you can see, it's very faint as it is. It was like a stamp. And uh, sometimes they would have stickers on the bottom with the model number. And this one apparently did. So I'm not going to take off the other one. The other one, someone, it probably faded and someone just put an arrow pointing towards the wave crest mark. But this had a model number on it. Uh, wow. Okay. Because you would pick from... from like one of their catalogs, you'd pick and you would decide which uh, one you want to sell. So like a wholesaler uh, would go into their catalog and say, I'll take the 1805, one of those, two 1736s, 15 1603s, you know, so you all had like a production or a model number. This one is actually quite beautiful because it almost has a puffy, what, what we know is like a puffy a design. Now they made egg crate design. They made the Helmschmied swirl, which was another pattern, which um, the opal glass went in a swirl going around. But the Helmschmied swirl is probably the most common. But these beautiful, like puffy designs are least common. So this one is actually really interesting in the fact that it's almost like an aqua blue with pink. Really quite lovely. And did you know during the Victorian era, blue was a male, actually a female color, and pink was a male color. It was the opposite. Uh, pink was, yeah, a color for men, and blue, and generally the lighter pastel uh, colors uh, were for women. And uh, really quite cool. All right, let's find out more about uh, the uh, company, and uh, let's go ahead and segue over. All right. So what is Wavecrest glass? Wavecrest glass is an opaque white glassware manufactured by the Pearpoint Manufacturing Company of New Bedford, Massachusetts, and some French factories. It was decorated by the C.F. Monroe Company of Meridian, Connecticut. The glass was painted in pastel colors and decorated with flowers. Very interesting. Let's uh, check out uh, some more. Here's the history. And, okay, Bargain John's uh, C.F. Monroe history, Wavecrest, Kelva, and Nakara. So some of the pieces were marked with the words Kelva and Nakara as well. And here's some of their uh, designs. Really quite beautiful. This one really is one that you don't generally find. And I believe this is a jar. And it's a cigar humidor. There we go. And there is the type of decoration that that uh, particular one had. And it's a dresser box, this one, with a cupid. Now, that one was made towards the end of the company's reign when they started using stencils. And stencils are like transferware where they paint it over a picture because they were not as um, prolifically doing it handmade anymore because it cost them more money. And here we go. It says glass companies in nearby New Bedford, Massachusetts, uh, however, while the enamel and the prices begin to rise for the various decorated opalware articles produced by the Mount Washington and the Smith Brothers companies, C.F. Monroe pieces are often uh, sat. Um, they also they, bleh, they the C.F. Monroe pieces often sat unnoticed on shelves of many antique shops. While this irrevocably 
Um, all of this irrevocably changed when Albert Christian uh, Revi, author of 19th Century Glass and other authors, began to call collectors' attention to the fine qualities of this novelty glassware. The fire collector enthusiasm was ignited and prices began a dramatic rise. And here we go, decorated opalware was the height of its popularity from 1890 to 1910, and the C.F. Monroe Company was one of the largest producers of this type of glass. Charles F. Monroe opened his shop, um, well, his first shop in 1880, and was located at 36 West Main Street in Meridian, Connecticut, and he dealt primarily uh, in imported glassware. By 1882, Monroe was operating his own glass decorating studio and was soon in joying well employing highly uh talented local artists as directors and decorators um actually decorators <laughs> and when, i get nervous reading this stuff <laughs> when the 1990s arrived and the demand for finely decorated glass was at its height the monroe company was did did that say the 1990s my oh, okay i need reading glasses for sure when the 1890s arrived the demand for finely decorated glass was at its height. The Monroe Company was located in several large buildings of the corner of West Main Street and Capitol Avenue and employed such fine artists as Carl V. Helmschmied, Walton Nelson, J.J. Novak, Joseph Hickish, Carl Puffy, Flora Feast, Gustav Reinman, Florence Noblock, Emil Melchior, and Alma Wank. Uh, and it goes on and on. Blanche Duval, Gussie Strem, uh, Strem, uh, Stremlin, Elizabeth Zebart, and Elizabeth Casey. The decorators often went back and forth between the, let's see this, the G934C Wavecrest jewelry box, the Helmschmied Swirl Companies, and sometimes uh, poses a problem of attribution. As is always the case, public taste changed, and the demand for decorated well hand decorated opalware began to decline after 1910 the cf monroe company went out of business in 1916. so cf monroe did not manufacture its own glass rather it bought its blanks or an, an undecorated glass from france mount washington pear point and possibly other american glass houses one i was told in personal communication was rotifer glass company in bel air ohio Ray Menendian of Columbus, Ohio, now deceased, knew the son personally. The son had some pieces decorated by C.F. Monroe on glass made of rotifer. These glass blanks were on opaque, creamy white glass called by the trade opalware. While the majority of these blanks were made in a mold and the mold lines may be detected on the finished product, pieces have been discovered without any mold marks. I don't think it was ever blown. It is interesting to note that some of the glass, such as the Helmschmied Swirl, was designed and patented by C.F. Monroe. What we now refer to as egg crate, or a puffy piece, actually called billowware in the catalog, as well as blown out flowers, are unique to C.F. Monroe, as it is much of their other glass blanks they used. One can infer that they must have designed the glass and had it made for them and did not just decorate what was made at the time. It is unusual to see other companies use the same blanks and decorate them. Before the blanks were decorated, a large number of them were treated to an acid bath of some type. This gave the blanks a soft, lusterless fill, uh, finish. Many of these blanks were not acidized, had matte surface painted on with the background color. Several acidized pieces have been found with a glossy background, color painted on all or part of their surface. These are scarce. Very few pieces were left in their original glossy state. And here we go. Here is a beautiful, beautiful box. As you can see here, let's zoom in. And uh, this one, it says, uh, this is model number G481C, and it's a Baroque shell mode hinged jewel box. Very interesting. And so here we go. Uh, let's see if there's any other pictures of their products. Yes, here's another item. This is a broom holder. They made all sorts of things. Um, the boxes were not just one of them. This one is a Kelva hinged box. So it would be marked Kelva. You may see that. Um, it's not as common as the ones that are marked CF Monroe, believe it or not. They came after. So those were the later pieces. Here is a biscuit or a cracker jar. Really quite cool. And you can see the 
workmanship on that. Let's continue to go. Here is a salt and pe pepper shaker set. Really nice. And that's all we have here. So when I first started to collect these pieces, they were really expensive. A piece like this would have been easy, three to $450. Now with the uh, popularity of websites such as Ruby Lane, Etsy, eBay, uh, First Dibs, Mercari, Poshmark, uh, you're finding them now a lot more easily than you did 10, 15, 20 years ago. When I first started collecting them was about 20 years ago. I do have uh, not a lot, but quite a few in my collection. Now, the sad part is, is, is that now the prices are really going down. They're trending down. So this box may have been hundreds of dollars about two decades ago. And now the, you can get one like this on eBay for about 70 bucks. But if you went on a website such as Ruby Lane, or if you went on Etsy or First Dibs, a box like this would sell in the $200 to $450 price range. eBay, not so much. i show you the insane, the insaneness, okay? So on one website, a CF Monroe box is $589. On another, it's $695. On another, it's $59.99. So as you can see, the prices are all over the place for the same product. Well, genuinely, this like similar, sim similarly the same product, but uh, the price is all over the place. Now these letter boxes, these puffy ones, are hard to find. I do have one in my collection. It's it, they're very very pretty. A lot of collectors when they see them on eBay. They do not know that they are not supposed to have lids on them, and so they think it's broken. So that's how I was able to get one of mine for under 20 bucks. They thought it was a broken box, and even the seller said, broken box, missing lid. And it, it turned out it's a letter holder. I have a, a beautiful one. Here's another one. This is unusual, and this one is selling for $295. See, Etsy is uh, also very prolifically selling these. This one, $80.00 and 95 cents and this one here on Etsy $95 see you can see that this these prices are all over the place uh, let's uh zoom out 125 uh, $295 uh, $395 on Etsy uh, eBay again does not trend well let's see if we if we can see here's uh, some Etsy we'll go into Etsy here's uh, another sellers box why can I make this smaller I don't know but 152.62, let's go back. And generally, like I said, you're gonna find these and you're gonna find these in all different price ranges. It's gonna really uh, confuse the hell out of you. Like why is one worth more than another? It's not that, it's subjective. Price is always subjective. What one person will pay for something, another won't and vice versa. All right, so let's look at some more photos. We'll go to images. And we'll see all the different ones that you can collect. Here's one with one of the stencils on the top that I was telling you about. So it was actually uh, transfer printed, not hand painted. The one on the left here, this one's a rare one. It has feet. And this one is beautiful with the hand painting. And there's no price on that one. But, you know, prices, again, are subjected. This, these ones are very, very uh, sought after. This is an egg crate style. It looks like an egg crate. You see how it's puffy like that? Really beautiful. Again, the one on the right here with the legs or the feet, even with the transfer wear on top, is sought after because it's a puffy piece. It's not one of their common pieces. And you can see it's really quite beautiful. This is uh, another beauty. Here we go. A thrift store, you know, antique seller is selling one of those on their own website, which is another good idea. If you're looking to flip things, create your own website. If you have vintage and antique items and you will get more prices, or well, higher prices than on eBay. This is a really beautiful shell style. Another one that collectors go wild over. And well, how much is it? We'll find out. $145 on Etsy. All right, let's get out of there. And check out more um, so there's a, a plethora of these a plethora of these type of boxes and novelty is made by wavecrest to collect this is a beautiful beautiful collar um a collar box people used to wear detachable collars with the puffy egg crate style top that one is really sought after and let's go ahead and see on first dibs what it's selling for yes first dibs i'm going to tell you something right now about first dibs 
If you want to pay 100% more than something's value, buy it on first dibs. This one sold for $1,200. Now, if you listed something like this on eBay, you flip this on eBay, you would probably get no more than $125 for it. I am not kidding you. Uh, it is unbelievable about the price differences. eBay just does not get the price. All right, let's go back and look at some other pieces. I'm going to have to just, yeah, there we go. All right, so you can see the different prices. On eBay, this one is $55. On eBay, this one is $64.99. On eBay, this one over here is $75. And you see how Etsy, the price just gets higher. It's just the quality of the platform you're selling on. Here, again, eBay, $38. Okay, do not flip your stuff on eBay. I always warn you guys about this. I know I say this a million times, $26.99 on eBay. All right, so as a collector, I love eBay as an antique collector because I can find so many things that would cost like probably triple or quadruple the price uh, for way less on eBay. But as a, a collector, I'm not too thrilled about eBay. Why? Because eBay actually uh, devalues antiques. There's so many sellers that get these things at thrift stores that, no, I'm not knocking you. If you're a thrift store person and you got this on at a thrift store and you got 50 other things to sell, you want to sell it fast, you, you're not greedy, you just want the money now, someone like you might put this on for 30 bucks. And, uh, like, you, you're, you're really devaluing the prices of antiques because now uh, somebody also look, oh, what's the solds on eBay? Oh, that only sold for 30 bucks. Oh, that only sold for 20 bucks. Uh, yeah, so your wave crest is now worth 30 bucks or 20 bucks. But then on first dibs, $1,200. On Etsy, you're seeing them for $125. You're seeing them for $325 and $200. And yeah, but eBay really devalues antiques. So if you're a flipper, Say you just got this at a thrift store. What should I do? Don't sell it on eBay if you want money. Uh, seriously, uh, get yourself a Etsy shop. Uh, if you have lots of vintage and lots of antique, get your, branch out. Get yourself an Etsy shop, and you can raise your price by at least a minimum of twice the price. So if you were going to sell this for 30 bucks on eBay, you can at least get a minimum of 60 Okay? So don't don't bother with eBay if you're selling antiques. Or vintage. I'm, I'm not going to kid you. Everybody is out there, including me, looking for bargains. We don't want to pay what the retail value of these items are. So what we're going to do is we're going to get, you know, we're going to get you to sell us this item for under <laughs> like 40 bucks when it's probably worth about 200 bucks. Yeah, not it, it, you're not going to get the money. So a lot of you people that uh, are thrift store people, like you go on the hunt for thrift store items to flip on eBay, you watch my channel, and I'm telling you right now, eBay is just a bargain hunter's dream. You cannot get the prices for these items on eBay. It's not going to happen. So if you're looking to sell my 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 like actually my best advice to you, if you have a lot of antiques and a lot of really good quality vintage items, open up a Ruby Lane shop. That uh, First dibs is forget it. You gotta have, actually I was reading, first dibs, the rent, you have to pay rent to sell on first dibs like it would be uh, like real estate on Fifth Avenue. It's between, uh, I believe it was two to $3,000 a month to have a store on first dibs. And then they take like 30% commission uh, yeah, that's why you're seeing the price is 10 times the value being sold on first dibs. Well, the rich people don't care. They'll buy from first dibs and uh, without batting an eyelash. So, you know, but your best bet, get a Ruby Lane shop. It's like just one tier underneath, uh, I'm trying to think, one one tier underneath uh, Cherish and first dibs, but higher than Etsy. Okay, and so that's my video. Hope you learned something. If you're looking to flip these don't expect more than like 40, 50 bucks on eBay. Uh, on Etsy, I would list this for 200 to $225 all day long. I would get my price. I used to sell there and I used to sell on all the platforms except for first dib, uh, first dibs. Actually, Ruby Lane was my most lucrative. It was where the most people would spend the money without balking at it. Uh, Etsy, second after, uh, Ruby Lane, eBay, worse. 
worse. I would never, ever, ever get the value for my antiques on eBay. It was a waste of my time, to be quite honest. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. This is a beautiful, beautiful score at $15. Uh, I was in shock when I saw it. I was afraid. When I saw the ad with the price, I scrolled quickly uh, right down to that description because I was waiting for it to say that it was broken, cracked, or chipped. No. And it's just absolutely amazing that it has the original interior in it. All right. Now you learned something. So long.